Well, hello there, you rambunctious rascals. My name's Mikey, and welcome along to another episode of Draw with Mikey, episode 70. It's a pleasure having you. So, for those of you guys not in the know, this is the casual midweek or Wednesday series where basically I'm just going to get cracking on with any drawing that I happen to be doing. Maybe you're getting some own artwork done in the background or anything else. And really, the main point is it's spoiler alert, swear word alert, casual. I get to read through your comments and basically just see what's going on with you guys. So, uh, yeah, if you guys have got anything to say to me, drop into the comment section below. Let me know, and with any luck, I'll be able to grab it next time around. Um, so, just before I dive in, really quickly worth a mention, because I've not done a, a kind of a massive launch video on YouTube. I now do this or anything like that, but I am now on Twitch.tv, uh, which is great. Thanks to technology, thanks to all of the support on the, of the patrons on Patreon that I've managed to make that a thing, which is absolutely delicious, but it does mean um, this visual part of the DWM, the bits that I'm working on here in terms of a kind of Max Fleischer cuphead, cuphead style theme, I actually did live over the course of several hours whilst chatting to people live on Twitch. So um, like the time-lapse version, you might see me working, you might see me stop on and off, and I'm not quite sure how much of um, cropping I should do, whether it's worth having my face in the corner on the webcam, moving, I'm assuming, at a really high speed, or just squeezing it in so it's just for page. Let me know, that'll be very, very helpful. Anyway, so um, what's going on? Duck Nam got into the comments and said, Yo, I don't really have a good zombie movie. Does I Am Legend count? If it does, I choose that one. So yeah, at the end of the last episode, I did actually say to you guys, Oh, my delicious friends, would you mind terribly giving me your suggestions on good zombie films? I'm not going to make a note of all of the ones that I've seen, obviously, but I'm just keeping an ear out or an eye out to see if there are any extra good ones worth my attention. Uh, I Am Legend is good, although... It has a... Spoiler alert. <laughs> I did give you a spoiler warning in the beginning. It has a scene with a dog that makes me really, really sad. So I watched that film once and I <laughs> never went back to it. Anyway, you got loads of stuff done whilst listening along, Duck Nam. I'm very pleased to hear it. And uh, yeah, you've been waiting for a DWM for eons. Last episode, episode 69, The Number of Naughtiness, uh, was the first episode in a really long time. So I am very pleased that we're kind of rocking back into the flow of this kind of thing. Bobo Nicosi says, what's up Mikey? Ever tried doing an anime mashup? Bobo, how do you mean exactly? Like, um, drawing a picture where I've got loads of different anime characters from different things together? Because yes, I really like that idea. Um, when I'm at work, I've been doing a few um, sketches of the big sword crowd. <laughs> I know that sounds really weird. Um, it's not a euphemism, I promise. But basically, um, like, uh, oh, who's the guy? Zabaza from uh, Naruto, and obviously Guts from Berserk, and Cloud Strife, and a couple others. Like, I was just wondering how they'd all work together in like a kind of a big sword like mashup setting, or a kind of exactly what to do. I do do a lot of combination drawings of uh, some of the busty uh, female characters from different animes as well. Sometimes I grab the fan arts and I stick them all together for various banners and various designs, but I do like where you're going with that, but what exactly do you mean? Because my ears are open. Eyes, really, I'm reading. Drawing wing dumpling free, or dumpling smiley face, or that kind of cute face says, I listen to Gordon Ramsay. You listen to Gordon Ramsay when you're getting work done. Wow, is that worth it? Because obviously, I know he's really big in the States, and about 10 years ago, he was really big in the UK before he moved over to most of your end. Uh, but like, I mean, it's funny because he rips people apart because he's very good and also very unkind. But I don't know if that makes for good listening whilst you're getting artwork done or uh, cracking out a project in the background. God Eater says, hello, Mikey. Hello, God Eater. My next assessment is to create our own character. So would you mind if I steal your character and add my own features? It's a group work of 200 marks along with presentation. Thank you. I like all of your videos and your narrations. Oh, thank you very much. And I wish I could speak like you in my upcoming presentation. Presentations are tough, God Eater. You have to get used to that as young, at a young at age as possible. Had to do some presentations back in the uni days and art critiques and stuff like that. So you have to get really robust and get used to pinning up your stuff and don't put your, all of your, like, put your heart into your work. But when you pin it up on a board, you have to take your heart back out of it because people are going to give you, hopefully, some very constructive criticism. Um, and most of the people who do that in like um, critiques are professionals or people who know their stuff. So it's definitely worth listening to, even if you kind of felt you were going in a bit of a different direction. Keep your eyes and mind open. Not that you've asked for any advice. I'm just kind of remembering stuff. Um, if I steal your character and add my own features, what character? Because I don't, 
I haven't done, except for the one I'm doing right now, by the way, for this kind of Cuphead themed character that I was working on live with you guys. I don't have like my own character. I don't have an OC. Um, so you can use any of the ones that you've seen, but all of my characters are probably existing characters. Fill your boots is where I'm going. Axio what? Hey Mikey, hello Axio. I'm glad my comment was able to break you into song. <laughs> yeah, okay. This is my one rule. Try not to do too much singing this episode if I can. I've got to smash for comments. I think one of the first games that got me into... Oh! Another of the questions. I'm so greedy these days, I do apologise. As well as asking for your suggestions for zombie films, just in case there's a good one I haven't seen. Um, I was also asking you guys, what was the first... Now, it doesn't necessarily need to be your favourite video game, but what was the first video game you saw as a kid, or an adult maybe, that really made you just think, Oh shit, what is this? Video games! I want to play with this! Get me involved! Anyway, uh, Axio, you say, uh, it was Jet Set Radio Future. It came with the first ever Xbox my family bought, so I was a kid at the time, but I was drawn in by everything about it. The music was catchy, the story was easy to follow, and it had the sickest multiplayer. And most of all, it was fun. Axio, fun stuff is fun- oh, <laughs> so many paragraphs. Anyway, you used to play for the story mode of your cousins. And your younger cousin sat on the disc, so you never got to beat the game. Oh, mate. I didn't realise this story had, like, a sad ending. <laughs> um, over time, I found games to fill the void, don't we all? Um, but Jet Set Radio Future gave me the right attitude to, um, to diving into stuff. I recently picked up another copy and close to beating it, full of nostalgia. Dude, very good. Very, very good. Jet Set Radio Future. Sitting... Oh, man. <laughs> so sorry to hear about sitting on the discs. Um, I'm just going to have a little sip of juice over here. Wow, I just said juice, didn't I? It's good like I'm speed talking. Um, I've got a cup of coffee. I've just recently woken up. So that's my excuse. Mm. There we go. Um, anyway, yeah, multiplayer games are absolutely awesome for things to get dragged into. But you mentioned fun as a keyword. So this brings me to a thing that... Um, oh, God, who was I talking to about this? Anyway. And, oh, in fact, so... Oh, yeah, so I was talking to this about Ken. I don't know if any of you guys know who Ken is. Sometimes I talk to him about films on another channel. Anyway, um, we were having a talk about Marvel versus DC. This is before the last film out. Don't worry, I'll make this a really quick story, I promise. Um, and basically, uh, my argument was that Marvel versus DC, except for now that DC are trying to change the direction that ship's going in, the thing is, Marvel spent its time trying to be fun, and DC spent its time trying to be cool. And that's why Marvel was successful and DC wasn't. In terms of just a an overall theme that kind of permeates all of the movies. Um, and basically, I was taking that idea and basically saying, that's the difference between Mario and Sonic. In that Sonic is like, there's so many versions of Sonic games. I'm sure this is a comment that's been argued before. But Sonic always tries to be cool. Whereas Mario games and Nintendo have always tried to be fun. And the thing is, is it doesn't matter how old you are as you grow up through the years, you know, like releasing new games as well to keep up with the audience. Fun is always fun. Whereas cool is, I mean, fun is as well, but cool is way more subjective than fun is. And cool changes and shifts very easily and becomes very uncool and very um, dislikable very quickly, um, depending on like the culture and genre. So I, that was why we were kind of saying that DC has a sonic vibe about it. It's always trying to be cool and it's kind of gets a fresh generation of people each time and struggles to keep an ongoing audience whereas Marvel always tries to be fun and it doesn't matter if you're new and a young kid or an old boy who's grown up for comics like fun is fun and it kind of draws people in. Side time over. Story time. Mikey's opinions about films versus video games. Let's make a video about that. We'll talk about the intrinsic nature of um agenda behind medium game and film in a different video one day in the future but i'll never make application says hey mikey hello application so glad to see a new dwm thank you really glad to be back i really missed you oh dude cheers since last time i graduated with my sound technology degree oh dudes awesome this is me clapping. I'm not my masturbating, I promise. So you know what that means? I have to be an adult now. Also, I don't like to advertise myself in comments, but could the newest vid on my channel is a time-lapsed art music video that I primarily made because I was listening to your videos. If you have a chance, I'd be honored if you check it out. Applications. I'm gonna allow it because you've um, passed your degree. So well done for committing to a course and getting out the other end of it, dude. Um, people, go check out his time-lapsed art music video. I hope it's good. I'm not going to give it a click right now, but I will come back. Blue Saber Wolf MC says, Yes! I finally got mentioned! And no problem. Got to love the silly singing. Oh, dude, you're so forgiving. <laughs> so forgiving about the sing-songs. At the moment, I've been working on my Girls with an Animal Features 
Oh, girls with animal features, and I believe it's going on nicely. Hashtag hardcore crew. Nice one, Blue Saber. And Vluconic says, Hey, have you ever drawn Chun Li from Street Fighter yet? Oh, damn. Dude, I ages ago um, was thinking about doing it. And I was like, right, I'm going to look at loads of Chun-Li art and put it in a folder somewhere on my computer. And, oh my god, that, like, she's got some thick thighs, man. I'm not kidding. Like, damn. <laughs> my eyes were, like, as big as saucers. And eventually I was just like, ooh, I, um, I think I'm just going to go out and look at some real people in real life for a moment and just put that folder away somewhere. Because <laughs> I was just like, wow, I'm really feeling this story. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I put that down. But... Oh, absolutely, is she on the list? Yeah, absolutely. And even despite the Christine Kreuk film that they did, it was terrible. Even despite how much I used to fancy Christine Kreuk from the Superman movies. Ah, oh, dear, oh dear. Manly Gamer says, Mikey, hello there, Manly. It's been a while. I broke my phone, sorry about that. But anyway, it's great to be back and seeing DWM is just what I needed. Excellent, Manly. Thank you very much. Zamasul Aldias. <laughs> Zamasul Aldias. Zukul Lemov. Oh, my God. Wow, what a name. You are the best artist I know. Your drawings are great. Your style of drawing is great. I admire you. Zamasu. Thank you. very. Those are very kind words, dude. Thank you. Seriously, I mean, I probably say this all the time. I don't think I say it enough, to be honest. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I am not the best artist. I am a guy who does art with a particular style. But my God, there are some amazing artists here on YouTube. Thank you very much if you subscribe and follow to these videos. Um, but check out the range of people doing incredible things. My mind is almost never not blown. In fact, and um, because I've recently, this is my, sorry, I'm getting too excited. <laughs> this is my second week of um, doing live stuff on Twitch. It's my second week of Twitch in general and working out how that works and what the community is like and what's going on. So I got there. And they have IR, so it's got like all of the games, you guys probably know Twitch better than I do, but when you go on there it's got all the different games people are playing and like how many, how popular the viewing audience is. And there's one which is IRL, which means in real life, but I didn't realise that at first, so as I was scrolling through I was just like, oh that's a weird looking game, it's just got people's faces coming out the screen, and I went past it. Eventually I realised what it was, so I went in and I was like, wow there's some, well, it's just a lot of people just doing random shit and then there's like yeah there's a lot of booby streamers on there as well but just sit there and you're kind of just like oh man this this is what you do i mean it's fine i'm not here to judge but it's also for someone who's kind of used to seeing boobs it's not entertaining because you know there's no character or personality behind some of these people not that i'm hating at all but basically what i'm getting at is for every now and then I'd see like a couple people doing artwork and I was like brilliant this is what I was thinking of doing based on all of your suggestions obviously over the years um, so I was kind of going into dipping into people's um, Twitch streams it might be somebody like just doing some artwork with a couple followers or it might be somebody really popular and so on and the thing that I noticed is that everyone I was like just sort of saying hi I'm just checking out your artwork everyone was so welcoming and so nice and it had like this really good vibe and this really like atmosphere uh, so I was like awesome but I wasn't seeing enough people do art on there and then eventually <laughs> like I did a whole week of this where I was following just a, like three or four people doing art every now and then eventually I realized another thing that they've got down there is creative as in twitch creative and then I was like oh shit there's loads of artists on here and some incredibly talented people so basically like I'm on my uh, Twitch honeymoon where I think everything, the honeymoon period where I think everything's really good about Twitch. So yeah, I'm really enjoying that. I'm really enjoying doing a little bit of art or a little bit of video gaming. And then once I've wrapped up and said goodbye, I usually then just dip into somebody else's stream to sort of see what they're up to or catch up with their own artwork. And yeah, the crowd there is really nice. I mean, don't get me wrong. The crowd in here is delicious, but over there it's kind of live. So you get to talk like straight up face to face. So if any of you guys do listen to these TWMs, if you make it this far in as well, uh, bloody love you for it, of course. But uh, seriously, it's not just a cross selling. You might want to consider um, going to twitch.tv, not just to try to catch me live and talk to me, which I would love, by the way. But in a very general sense, if you guys aren't already aware this happens, and you probably are because I'm really behind, but there's loads of artists who are live on there and are really good to talk to other than myself for kind of information and ideas. Great place to go. Oh God, is YouTube going to get angry at me for cross-selling? I hope not. Anyway, uh, Angel Triple Nine Girl says, 69 dudes. Yeah, that was the episode of the last DWM. I did avoid doing any... Um, 
anything really. There was no like 69 as in Kama Sutrically. There was no 69 in terms of maybe doing, is it Aquarius? Who has, no, Pisces. Is that the star sign which is the 69 fish fish thing? Got to watch out Troy McClure for all of that 69 fishing. Who gets that? I have no idea. And Joel says, Zombie films! Zombieland is special to me because although I've seen it many times, my fondest memory was of watching it with a really good girlfriend and we had this really good heart to heart. Oh, dude! Film association where you watch it with um, uh, other people, exes, past or... I was going to say exes, past or present, but if they're present, that means they're just actively your girlfriend or boyfriend. You are my present ex. <laughs> That's brilliant, I've got to remember that. Um, we solved all of our problems and had great many additional years going out, even parting on great terms. So thank you, Zombieland. Ah, oh, Joel, that's good news. Art. I've been trying to be using an XP Pen Artist 16, but it's not helping me much. I'm focusing on controlling my shaky hands more through concentration. But last time I focused so hard I stopped breathing. Hardcore Shaolin skills right there. Congrats on 204k. Thank you very much, Joel. Um, yeah, people subscribing to the channel is brilliant. I did my thank you video and I'll be honest, like I got a little bit feels towards the end when I was recording because uh, I was just like, I'll just do all the drawing bit and then I'll sit down and have a little talk and just say, you know, thank you to the camera and thanks to the patrons. Um, and then like I was kind of just thinking about it in general and like the crowd that we've got and stuff. And by the end I was just like, oh, this is, I'm actually like really, really lucky, like really fortunate to like do all this stuff anyway i'm not gonna <laughs> oh my god i was nearly going there again anyway i nearly got the feels again and i nearly got the feels in the last video as well um dude i hope your controlling and focus goes well um you know there are artists who uh i forget this name i can't remember his name right now i'll have to google it there's a particular artist who had like a stroke or like a tumor or something and it completely like fucked his coordination and now like he's in a wheelchair and he has to use like a supportive arm brace and so on but um, what he did is he just upscaled his art. So he used to be like a fine art artist. Now he works on really large canvases. And if you imagine when you get pixel art and you zoom in really far and the pixels are really large, he uses these larger work areas with his really kind of rougher hands and flow to create art that if you come quite far back at a distance, it still molds back into a piece, like a really upscaled version of pointillism. Um, so, I mean, as well as just focusing your mind and getting really zen with your muscle control, sure, that might help with the hands. Um, but sometimes, I don't know how to put it, because if you're trying to achieve a particular type of art, I completely understand it's frustrating. It's a bit of a journey that you've got to struggle against. Um, but what about the other flow? What if you went pure Jedi? Don't fight it, embrace it. Uh, let the shake be the shake, but maybe work on a completely different scale where the shake kind of loses itself over distance. I don't know if you have resources or means or if what I say even makes sense. Or if you're working on a tablet, dude, make that canvas freaking massive, zoom right in, work on these smaller areas, allow the shake to be the shake, zoom out and see if it kind of blends back into a, a kind of a final thing. And let me know how it goes, if you give it a try, of course. AP3X SOU1. Oh! <laughs> Apex Soul. Sorry, I'm not up to date with funky writing. I love that there are zero dislikes. That can't be the case now. It's been up for ages. Two dislikes, 1,000 likes, and the last DWM. That's totally fine. I like those. I like those rates. Who dislikes instead of watching? Actually, it's okay. Opinions are welcome. Because that's like... Oh, we don't have free internet anymore, do we? Um, what was the thing that got repealed? Um, equal net neutrality. There we go. Back in the days of net neutrality, you're allowed likes and dislikes. Now, God knows what will happen if I get too many dislikes. Your free YouTube trial has expired. You now have to pay money. Everything is YouTube red. Anywho, um, where am I going? <laughs> I'm just like scrolling around looking at likes. Let's scroll back down the chat. Here we go. Um, Derek Tsai says, here's to you, Mikey. Thank you very much, Derek. Congratulations on your well-earned 200k subs. I can't wait to see you on your next stream, either Twitch or YouTube. Thank you very much, dude. Yeah, um, I did, whilst I was getting used to the online thing, going back to the old Twitch thing, I was also streaming a lot of Resident Evil on YouTube, just to see what is it like to stream on YouTube versus what is it like to stream on Twitch, and I've got all of my answers, and uh, streaming on Twitch is basically a better place to do it. There's all these pop-ups and overlays and cheering and stuff with the crowd that's much more fun. There's a load of artists doing live streaming on Twitch anyway, which is also lots of fun. I mean, I like, might leave live stream art here before but all of the video games have moved to twitch as well in terms of live streaming just because it hurts the analytics of the channel and you guys have all gotten in the comments and been really nice about it as well which i appreciate because normally comments are full of hate um, But you guys are just like 
Mikey, I subscribe to you for the artwork. Your gaming videos are fine, but that's not what I'm into. And I don't click on them, and it means that like I get less suggested next time. So take it on board. <clears throat> I've been really stubborn about that and only doing what I want for ages. Um, but then it was just a case of, oh shit, I can just make another YouTube channel, can't I? So I'll do that. However, oh my god, we're going on a side tangent again. I'm so sorry. So um, what I've been doing in the background is I've made a, another YouTube channel um, called Mega Mega 2. You can't search for it at the moment, I don't think, because it's got no content. Um, and I don't think it's going to have any content until after Christmas, which is why I'm not sort of launching it either. Um, because why have I done this? Oh, yeah. So at the start of this year, I made like a Mikey Whitehead channel just for general vlogs and stuff like that, which I don't do. I haven't got the time. Um, but also, it's still good if I'm making videos about holidays with my friends and stuff um, or just messing about. So that exists. And then there's Film Cram, which I... <clears throat> should put more time into but don't have the time but that is more of an active live channel i'm doing air quotes oh excuse me i'm having, having a burp as well um and film cram is well, like where all the movie stuff goes however that means i've made two new youtube verified accounts in 2017 and you have to like use your telephone number to like get sent a text message so it's all you know legit with google before you get the full access to uploading longer videos and stuff. Anyway, what I'm slowly getting around to saying, my God, this is a, you know, I'll, I'll give you the full tour of a theme park when all you want to do is go straight to the zoo. Like, I'm going to take you on every journey all the way around before we get to the point. Um, basically, it means that I've made another YouTube channel called Mega Mega 2, and I was like, brilliant. It's not going to be a channel that I spend too much time on personally. Um, because I'll be playing the video games live on Twitch, but this is where I'll put the video games when I upload them to YouTube so it doesn't cram up the main channel, Mikey Mega Mega. And I was like, excellent, Synergy, let's um, split that across. Anyone who likes the gaming side or follows there can go there, but um, for the most part, they'll probably join me on Twitch. However, I can't upload videos longer than 15 minutes because you, I haven't been able to authenticate that channel because YouTube only lets you use the same telephone number to authenticate two channels in any one given year. So what I'm doing at the moment, because I can't think of anything better, like, you know, getting a free SIM card from the shops or something. Oh shit, maybe that's what I should do. Can you still get free SIM cards in the UK? Used to be all the thing back in the uh, mid 2000s. I'll have a look, maybe I'll solve that. You know what, this problem. <laughs> oh God, why didn't I just think of this in my own brain before sitting down for a DWM? Maybe the channel will be up sooner than later. Anyway, what I was saying is that they won't let you um, use the same mobile number twice for more than two accounts per year, which means I've been saving all of the Twitch live streams. I've got them, like on a hard drive, because um, Twitch deletes them after a while. But I'm waiting to authenticate the account, the account first thing next year, and then we'll have another channel on the go. It'll be searchable and you can see it. Oh my God, I'm sorry I took so long to answer that question. Was it even a question or did I just go on a talk? Derek, hi, I just went on a talk. <laughs> MTO Artificial says, Persona series for sure, it's so good. Seriously, I'll give you some inspiration. Also, I tend to listen to, oh, it'll give you some inspiration. And you tend to listen to metal and rock whilst you work on art. Oh, you keep the energy up for your own art official. I like it. Ken Shine says 30 minutes 23. I'm not going to go back to, that's like a timestamp to last video. I won't click it because it'll get all loud probably. I don't know what's going on. And Ethan Solano says, hey Mikey, hello Ethan. One of my favourite zombie movies is The Return of the Living Dead, even though I'm like only 19 years old and the movie is much older. Dude, respect, that is a great film. Uh, I'm working on uh, Christmas drawings with my girlfriend and I also want to thank you for uploading your tutorials, DWMs and anime videos and game fan arts. I love to watch them. P.S. Sorry for the bad English, it's not my first language, but I love it. Thank you very much, Ethan Solano. Those are very kind things to say and I'm very pleased. Um, that they've been of some use whilst you and the missus get some stuff cracked out. Ethan, what's your first language? Just none of my business, obviously, but I'm just curious. I love uh, I love languages and I love people from uh, non-English speaking countries because I'm a sap for accents. Uh, Caleb Bellis says, first time commenting. Oh, Caleb, in that case, welcome. All lurkers are welcome as well, but if you want to get involved in the chat, do so. Um, the whole point of this series is for me to say hello to you. Anyway, Great to see another DWM. Always fun watching these. Your videos help me keep up my own drawings. Thanks, Mikey. I hope you have a good holiday. Caleb Bellis, right back at you to all of those things. Brandon C says, I was a 1,000th like. <laughs> yes. 
Thank you very much for the support, Brandon. And Michael Dojari or Dijari says, Hey Mikey. Hello Michael. Will you make a tutorial about Photoshop? I tried to watch every tutorial video in my winter vacation. Love your drawings. Ha ha ha. Dude, dude, dude. I have. This is really weird. Like, I don't think... I think it triggers all of YouTube's warning flags because it's like a busty image that we work on for about an hour. Um, so it doesn't come up in my tutorials playlist on people's suggestions much as other things. But I have. If you do look at my tutorial videos, uh, probably the last one I did actually, it's been a while, was the process that I use for colouring and artwork in Photoshop. The piece we finish off in isn't like the most amazing thing as well. It's just a bit of Cindy fan art we did for some other tutorials from Final Fantasy XV. Um, but basically over the course of an hour I break down the 10 main things that I tend to think about or you know my personal process when I get certain types of fan art pieces done. If I try to do something that's a bit more paintish like you know Almed Aldori's art or something like that and by the way my god his art is disgustingly good like it's it's delicious some of his artwork is so nice. Um, I basically say step one, step two, these are the main things. If you do it in this order, you'll make something that kind of roughly follows my style at least. So check it out. I hope you find it to be useful. Um, and this was another thing that I did long based off of all of your suggestions. And this is all in Photoshop as well. Uh, Jay Bozolinski says, I've been sketching daily, really trying to learn this whole drawing thing. Still complete beginner. Dude, never a problem. Crack on. I hope you enjoy it. But now my art looks less like that of a grade schooler and more like that of a junior high Weibo kid. <laughs> Dude, one rung of a ladder at a time, right? It's kind of been like reclaim reclaiming my youth. But seriously, I finally feel like I'm starting to make some slow progress. It's exciting. It's really true. You have to work at it constantly and consistently to improve. Yes, Mr. J. Boslinski, you do indeed. And talking about reclaiming your youth, it has that vibe, right, where... I mean, I'm assuming you're a bit of an old guy, or at least maybe near my age or something, I'm 33. But there is this weird thing in my head where um, some of my mates, like, you know, go on career paths or have particular skills which are incredible or manage stuff fairly high up in companies and stuff like this. Um, and, like, my personal path is, like, I'm, I'm well, like, all my life I've been very stubborn and I've always been much more interested in what the air quotes alternative option is to a good idea so in life when they're just like go study this do that work hard at this the first thing I think is well maybe I don't want to do that what else can I do like what are the other options in life if I see loads of people settling down with families and children I'm just like well what else then what other things are there to do if that's a common one anyway this is like deep down something that affects my decision making at like a core level in the back of my brain I've no idea why um Anyway, what I'm getting at is that, so when I was getting back into drawing over the last few years in line of the YouTube channel, a really similar vibe, I was like, this is really weird. I'm really diving back into some of my passions I had as a kid, like just drawing and video games. And I was like, is this one of those regressive things where, you know, people say, oh, this is what's wrong with our current generation. Men still try to be kids and stuff. And I'm just like, or is it that there's no reason why I can't pursue the passions I had when I was younger if I still feel passionate about them as I'm older. And it's kind of just like letting go of a little shackle or something like that. I'm supposed to be an adult. And it's nice to be an adult. You need to take responsibility and shit like that. Absolutely. And you need to like step up in life when you've got to. You can't just take a back seat. Personally, I don't believe. However, in terms of like how you spend your time and what you choose to do with it, uh, yeah, there is this weird like reclaiming the kid-like passions and realizing it's okay to do that as an adult so fuck it basically i'm saying don't let your doubts oh we're go <laughs> oh dear we're going on one of these um <clears throat> uh, facebook posts kind of you know life advice things don't let your doubts hold you back do you know what i mean that is they're the things that stop you yourself your the stuff you build up in your mind the walls you build based up on your upbringing and uh, the world you experience that block you from maybe just going straight to the core of something you're passionate about. Don't let that happen. Don't let your doubts be your own enemy. Let's have some sip of coffee. Hmm. Sorry, I didn't realize we we're gonna go into inspirational quote mode, but I mean it. Even if it sounds really cringe, the way that I put it, but it's, you know what I mean, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the second war of Mikey after a long time and I'm just like, oh man, I'm really I'm really rambling a lot more than I used to. And then now I'm thinking back to it and I was just like, no, this is this is pretty much how every episode was. <laughs> Draw with Taldrian, great name. Great artwork, Mikey. Thank you very much, Draw with Taldrian. And Omniscient Warrior says, Mikey. Oh hello, Omniscient. What's going on? Let's expand this comment. Something that you can try doing. Two layers on ending the clip. 
uh, for video moving at different rates but for the same amount of time and direction. It will create something like a 3D effect, well at least 2.5D, have one be the sketches or a shadow and put it in the back and a second top layer to be the centerpiece. <clears throat> Omniscient warrior, warrior, thank you very much for the suggestion for the 20 seconds of outro I'd like to stick on the end of the video and leave all the links to. Um, that's not a bad idea, um, using a slightly opaque layer, uh, a slightly transparent layer against an opaque one and have them animate to the same flow. However, I don't use like, uh, how to put it, useful animation software. My animation experience is really limited. I've made one animated video uh, and somebody, oh God, who found this? Does somebody tweet me or is it in the last DWM? Oh shit, or maybe somebody said it in a live stream. I've got one animated video on my channel my first and only an go that I've done and I really want to do more because I've got scripts for others that are like two years old that I never animated. However, in uh, Sony Vegas Pro, which is what I put all my videos together in personally, um, not because it's particularly recommended but because I started learning it once and I couldn't be bothered to learn anything else. Um, <clears throat> The animation function and the way you move things, kind of like sliding it around the screen, I don't know how to duplicate that to a secondary layer and use that as a master but with a time delay because uh, Sony Vegas Pro is more for people doing movies more than people trying to animate objects and make things visually behave in a certain manner. It's more about just rendering footage you've already got. Um, so I don't think I'm going to basically get that done today <laughs> when I put this video together. But thank you for the suggestion nonetheless. And Riku Haku says to anyone who reads this, including Mikey, any tips on sketching on a non-screen tablet in Photoshop? Riku Haku. Uh, yeah. Oh, and you further say, uh, sketching on a no-screen is hard. I have to upgrade a tablet with a screen ASAP. Makes me feel like I can't draw. It's a bit frustrating. I have a Wacom Intuos tablet tablet but it has no screen so I can barely see what I'm doing. Excuse me, having another burp. Ooh. Oh, how disgusting. Should edit that out but you will know I won't by now. Um, I'll tell you the way I used to do it. When I had just the tablet I didn't try to do final lines on there. Like I've moaned about how difficult I find doing um, final ink lines on digital tablets these days. I'm getting better at it. Um, but it's still way harder than doing it in real life. Final ink lines on paper are so much easier than uh, on tablets. But I digress. What I still used to do is basically all my pencil works on paper. Most of my inking work was on paper as well. Then I'd scan it in. Um, so I've got the line work out the way. And I used to just use the tablet um, to do all of the painting and fill all the gaps and all of the layers and all of the effects. Because uh, tablets are still really good for that. If you are going to commit to using them for the line work, Step one, slow down your work pace. Understand that you're going to be much more patient with a line. You might use loads of small strokes to build up a large line and so on. And two, don't get um, too disheartened because you have to keep at it for ages for your brain to calibrate and slowly it will come back. But three, if you're using two screens on a computer or anything like that, you might want to make sure that the tablet is only synced to one of them. So that a perfect circle on your tablet is a perfect circle on screen. It, otherwise, your tablet tries to dis stretch its workspace across two displays and that will really mess up your hand-eye coordination. Something to think about. I hope that's of use. Marcos Michael or Miss L says, Voici un gran talento que inspira novas, nova, novas artistas. Brasil, okay. I'm not saying that correctly. Um, but obrigado. Yeah, dude, Marcos. I'm really, really pleased um, that you found this to be inspiring and of some use as well. Awesome. And Andrew Otaku says, uh, been a while since I watched one of your videos. You've passed for 200k mark. Congratulations. Yeah, dude, thank you very much. I mean, everybody who in this chat has been saying to me 200k congratulations and all of that. I want you to remember you are... Oh, wait. What's the percentage? <laughs> you are one two hundred thousandth of the reason that that's happened, basically. And that might sound like nothing, but like, obviously, if none of you did it, there'd be nothing. It's all you guys just clicking and following along that's kind of made this possible. Anyway, we've kind of been over this topic already in the last video, but basically, thank you. Uh, the thanks goes right back to you guys. Awesome work, like always, for a Christmas sketch. Why not try Tanya Degurachaf? in some sort of Christmas outfit. Nothing more Christmassy than a mini Nazi. Oh. Oh, is this to do with... <laughs> it just reminds me of some chat that we had in the live stream a while ago, but I'm not going to try to explain it. Um, 
Uh, I'm just having a look. Is this to do with like those? Is it girls and panzer or something like that? Tank girls? Let's have a look. I'm just going into a new tab really quickly. Oh. <laughs> Don't quote me on this. She is a rather cute looking Nazi with a crazy grin, isn't she? Uh, yeah, we'll leave that tab open. Nazis and anime have been great for me. <laughs> context, context, <laughs> have been great for me uh, since the days of Helsing Ultimate, where they remade the Helsing series. Uh, they were really like fun characters, do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave that tab open. I don't know who this character is, I don't know what she's from, uh, but you have piqued my curiosity, good sir. We're gonna come back to that. New Cloud says, Ghost in the Shell was shit. I was really looking forward to that as well. Yeah, I did have a mention about my disappointment in the live action remake. I'm not going to get triggered, except to say you are correct, good sir. And yes, boy! <laughs> You're drawing Jill. Nice one. Cheers, New Cloud. Thank you very much. Yeah, in the last DWM, this is before I realised I was going to move everything to Twitch anyway. Before I now realised I'm going to move it back to YouTube on another channel, even though we're still going to film it on Twitch live. Um, yeah, I was thinking, and again, by the way, this isn't my idea. You guys have been telling me to do this for like two solid years again. But I was thinking, if I'm going to do live streaming games on Twitch and put them back to YouTube, I should draw my own versions of the characters to go in the thumbnails. Problem is, that all takes time, time I might not necessarily have. So I was just like, oh, come on, we've played Resident Evil so much, let's do a picture of Jill. And I wanted to, like, you've probably seen in the last episode, the final version of Jill that I came out with. It's not like a air quotes final piece, but it is, you know, good enough for a colour picture to whack into a small thumbnail somewhere. I wanted to draw Jill in a manner that represents a way that um, we've all been playing together Resident Evil in the live sessions, which is basically incompetent, looking scared, and uh, always having to hold on to a herb or something. So yeah, that's the version we came up with. Glad you liked it. Uh, Schnapp says, oh my god, you're so good at this. Oh, thank you very much, Schnapp. The last artwork gave me a massive boner. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Ew, I'll take away that thanks. Like, um, you can keep those bits of information to yourself. I mean, you don't have to. I say it again and again. Like, uh, the Draw of Mikey episodes, it, it, anything, no bounds. Like, this is a safe place. Um, I might still judge you and I might laugh in your face. Um, but yeah, don't, don't be scared to share the knowledge. I mean, you don't have to tell me about your bonus. <laughs> so, like, you can keep them secret if you like, that's fine. Anyway, um, Ty, Trigrave, oh, Trigrave Black Tiger Media, your names. Hey, it's my second time commenting. Oh, hello, excellent, thank you very much. I'm just going to call you BTM. But I just wanted to answer one of your questions for fun. Now, all of the anime stuff I have to say, I don't watch anime, but I came here to learn how to draw. Excellent. I'm glad at least something is of use. Music I normally listen to, themed music, based on what I draw at the time. Okay, so you listen to rock and metal when you found out you liked girls, and it was when you found you liked yourself on the you found yourself on the lewd side of the internet, and then around when you started I'm gonna have to put the sentence structure back together to make something real. You started drawing them a lot without clothing. And for projects, not just a lot of drawing random stuff and testing out new things. Okay, so you listen to a lot of rock and metal for your background drawing, and as you got into drawing, you ended up getting into the lewd side fairly quickly. Everyone's got their path, good sir. Uh, P.S. I'd love to have seen some Mercy again. Not an anime fan, but I love your video game stuffs. Yeah, I've done not a final version, but I have done a DWM where it was full of some of my attempts at Mercy, where I did a handful of digital sketches, and I ended up with like a rough Mercy template shot that I was going to maybe use for later art. So it's like the rough idea, but drawn to scale and the right um, layers. Oh, I completely forgot to go back to that, actually, yeah. Anyway, there is some, and we'll probably do some more. And I did do a slightly Mercy-themed uh, angel character on the Artist Pen XP 13.3 display review. Again, when people send me the tablets for review, <laughs> and they're just like, oh, we really like your art. Um, we wondered if you'd like to review this. And some of the companies, by the way, like uh, I probably mentioned before, Galmon are my favorite company to email because the people there are really hyped about the tablets they make and it just makes me smile, they, they charm me a little bit. Um, and some companies um, are just gonna send you a tablet because they know I've got subscribers and they've seen me do reviews before and they might not really follow the channel at all, but they'll still in the email say things like, oh, we love your artwork. So then they send me the tablet and I'm just like, <laughs> I'm going to draw a great big pair of tits with your tablet. <laughs> because like, <laughs> this is really like bad of me because 
I know it then makes them hesitant to put the video up on their own channel, like because they can't <laughs> they can't massively use it for promotion if it's not overly family safe. <laughs> That's like the evil. You know those uh, memes where it's Kermit the Frog and then it's Dark Sith Lord Kermit. <laughs> it's like me. I'm just like, oh, I got sent a new tablet for a company. I should really use this as a great opportunity to build up business connections and grow the channel. And then Dark Me is just like, <laughs> piss them off and draw a massive pair of tits instead. Anyway, that's uh, a little insight into Mikey's life again. Krypton Knight says, hey, from South Africa. Hello, very good, sir. First time commenting. Oh, in that case, welcome. Great content as always. I was making a quick chibi drawing of my OC, well, Tankara, whilst drawing this. Thanks for all of the inspiration. See you next year. I am going to open this in a new quick tab. Let's have a sip of coffee. Oh, dude, that's really interesting. I really like the color to it as well. Excellent. This dude's uh, got an OC with like a, an underbuzz cut, a little bit like Marceline, but it looks a bit cuter and younger. And you know, her character art clearly has a history because she's got herself a uh, like Kylo Ren style scar, not in the same place, but you know what I mean going right down things as well. I do like your OC, excellent. Anyway, because the reason why I say I like it, and this is uh, probably a rant for another time, not a rant, but a conversation for another time, is because what I think is so important when you're doing a character design and a bit of art, and you don't have to worry about it too much when you're drawing existing characters, because they already have a story, but if you're drawing like a character out of the blue, I think it's very important in your own head, whether you write it down or not, or just make it up as you're drawing, that you have like a fictional narrative for the character, that you already understand a little bit of the character's personality or what's happened to them in their life uh, whilst you're drawing a picture. And I like your OC kryptonite because the first thing I see when I look at that is, wow, how did she get that scar? What is that character like? Is that part of what now drives and motivates her? Like there's a story told a little bit in that picture. So yeah, well done, dude. Well done. Much more fun than when I am. Um, not that I'm hating at all, but some people send me links to their artwork and it's just a static character standing there, which is absolutely fine because we'll talk about how you put it together. Um, but other than the visual cues, I don't get too much that describes the character themselves as a person. Uh, Sean Smith says, hey Mikey, hello Sean, I'm a huge fan. Oh, thank you very much, good sir. Your tutorials have been helping me get back into drawing and working on understanding anatomy from an artist's perspective, and I'm hopefully going to have a Cintiq under my tree for Christmas. Clap, clap, clap. Good luck. Hope Santa brings you expensive art products. If you're looking for games to play, I highly recommend the Dragon Guard Nia series. They all can be played independently, but each game has multiple endings, and the last ending for each game connects it to the next. Oh, dude. I was live streaming last night, so I'm recording this on a Tuesday. You might be listening on a Wednesday, which means I was live streaming at Monday night. And in the... Uh, oh, we played Journey on Twitch. Oh, man. Journey is a delicious game. That was so chill. Anyway, digressing in that somebody was also saying much like they have done in previous dwms add near automata to the gaming list and then they said it's got like 26 fucking endings or something i don't need fucking 26 playthroughs i've got shit to do um but yeah i'll add, add that to the list what i do is i go to the second hand i'm trying not to buy off ebay so much anymore not that it's a problem but simply because there's a second hand game store uh, in the town next to my village and uh, I've only been in there a couple of times, but the staff there are like really friendly. So I'm just like, yeah, shit, I should just keep an eye out in here instead of going online. Uh, so if I see a copy of Nier Automata in there, I secondhand, I'll pick it up. I'll add it to the list. Uh, anyway, I believe the chron chronological order is currently Drakengard, Free, Drakengard, Nier, Nier Replicant, Gestalt, Nier Automata, Drakengard 2 kind of went in its own direction. Oh, shit. Oh, Drakengard's from the same universe as well. Oh man, this is... How deep does this rabbit hole go, go exactly? I'm just going to open a new tab. Drakengard. Known as Drag Dragon Dragoon in Japan. is a series of action role RPGs. Oh man, there's loads going on. Okay. Let's pop it onto images. Oh! Oh, you know what? I've seen this. Um, I've seen loads of people do fan art of this character that's got a flower over their eye, and I've always thought, oh, a flower over the eye. That's interesting. Um, and never thought of it again. But I've seen this character loads and never known what it's about. Well, 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 well. Okay, here's a quick question. Um, if I want to play Neo Automata, must I play um, Drake and Guard as well, or Dragon Dragoon? Is it? 
do I like is it a must do for the plot or can I just dive straight into near are there like because you've just named a load of games for me maybe you need to break it down for me into the three must plays or the two that's worth playing the most just because of time limitation Sean Smith and then if I really get into it I'll have a look myself thank you though for the suggestions Daisuke Uchiha says yeah you should do Persona 5 yeah we talked about that last episode um also in a really similar vein um so I'm just having a look quick look I don't know if I bought Persona yet did I actually get a copy or is it just on the list I'm going off piece to everybody talk amongst yourselves don't worry about me, I'm fine. Oh my god. So oh, man, I've got so many video games to work through. Um yeah, so Persona 5, I haven't bought it yet, by the way. It's the latest copy. The latest release, I should say, of the Persona series. And I was hoping just to dive in, because you guys have recommended that a lot, which is gonna be like the nearest I'll get to a um a visual novel for the moment, I'm sure. Not that I'm against visual novels, uh, I'm just not playing any right now. Uh can I play that Persona 5 without any understanding of a previous series? Or is it again something where I need to start from, you know, at least Persona 3 to know what's going on or whatever? Let me know. Mohammed TK says, Hey Mikey, hello Mohammed. Do you know how to out from the comfort zone? Please help. I know, I'm pretty sure I actually know what you're asking in that question. Um, how to kind of work outside your comfort zone and get stuff going? <sighs> Basically, any time you're about to try some artwork you don't feel confident with and you reach a point where you're thinking, oh, I won't try drawing hands in this position, it's too difficult, or uh, I'll just go back to what I like. Any time where you feel like you're about to default back to something you already know how to draw quite comfortably because that's like something you're quite common at doing, I would say stop the default moment and continue on. The moment you're not... By the way, like... um. I'm not saying like life has all the answers or anything like that. Especially watch uh, if you guys haven't watched that Draw of Jazzer episode about um, when you get like artist block or whatever and you just get really stressed out. Um, I only skipped through that video and I'm already saying it's definitely a good video. There might be a bit in the middle where he says, "Oh, I love Nazis, by the way," and I'm already promoting it. I'm sure he hasn't. Um, but basically, a video like that's really helpful. But what I'm getting at the long way around is that there is a structure to stuff, um, and it's not like the answer, but it's a simple approach, which is. Uh, if you reach a point in your artwork where you're doing something that feels far too difficult and you're feeling really anxious about it, like you, it's a difficult hand pose or it's a completely new medium, maybe you're trying to like use acrylics or oils for the first time and you're just like, oh, I don't think this is for me because I'm not quite learning anything. Anytime you feel that anxious moment where you're not capable, that is your body telling you you need to gain skills. So the way that you fight that anxiety or like fight that lack of um, self-confidence learn stuff learn stuff get on YouTube there's loads I mean you can take a real life course and join an art club you can find loads of resources free anyway on YouTube especially uh, sit down learn about how hands are built up learn how you work with oil paints um, go really basic follow a really simple tutorial get a feel for things don't dive into a final piece have a go at just working on a test piece of just a hand hands in general before you come back to your character or anything like that learn skills to build up your confidence to fight the anxiety for anything and to be fair this isn't just art i think this is probably a rule for life um and then in terms of pushing yourself when it goes the other way the moment you start to feel bored in your artwork and stuff feels really easy the moment you reckon oh I've got this down, I know the process to do this, I know the steps now, it's no longer an expl exploration, it's just a step-by-step -step thing and I know that by the end I can produce something. That's a really comfortable, happy place to be, but that again is your brain telling you um, it's time to learn something different and push yourself out. So anxiety basically, don't take this as genuine life advice, like, you know, if, if you're having trouble in life, see see someone and talk to somebody, because I'm not professional. <laughs> this is on the off chance that, like, somehow I need a disclaimer. I'm sure I don't. Um, but, like, anxiety and fear. Um, stop rolling forward too much further than you are. Learn skills. Then go for it. You're going to find it easier. Comfortable and bored, start rolling forward and trying something else until you hit a bit of anxiety and fear. Constantly zigzag between the two go up these steps side to side and you build up your skills towards the top i hope that makes god i really hope that makes even the slightest amount of sense because <laughs> not very good at conveying my thinking process anyway oh we went on a tangent again 
Uh, do Hartnet Harvey Drawing says, Hey Mikey, hello, Triple H. Just Triple H! <laughs> It's not even that. Oh my god. Oh, Hartnet Harvey Drawings. It's HHD. But in my head, I was like, oh, it's Triple H. And then I got excited about saying the words Triple H just from watching too much um, OSW review. Uh, and then I realised it wasn't all in the space of a moment. Sorry, I've just gone on an emotional journey. Um, Vova's series is nowadays spare and full of comments. I thought a series where you could where you and fans or a group get together and have a podcast done every so often where you literally have a discussion. A group of four would be enough. Or have fans do a podcast and you upload it um, where the DWM theme and read through the comments or have discussions on popular topics and animes to knit the commentary closer together and such. Therefore, lifting some weight off of you. Or from time to time, you join in. It's honestly an idea. If you'd like it, just reply. Should construct the ideas of a lot of fellow yearly long fans and such. P.S. I've already said this on the live streams. Rules of Mikey Streams. One, don't mention the armor room. Oh, dude, why did you mention the armor room? Two, don't mention the eagle room. Three, rest in peace, Tom. We never forget Tom. Four, fuck the bees. HHD, Hartnet Harvey Drawings. Yeah, you're um, you're reading through the rules of Resident Evil streaming with Mikey. Fucking hell, the armor room. I'm not even going to explain that to the rest of the people listening. Other than... I'm a fucking idiot, <laughs> and we were in the armor room for a while, and I don't read people's helpful comments enough. Something similar in the eagle room, it wasn't as bad. Tom, however, never forget Tom the Zom. I'm going to do more Tom the Zom drawings one day further down the line. And yeah, fuck them bees. Uh, Doki Doki Literature Club on Game Theory will fuck your mind. I know, right? Like, fuck, the, the characters are from another game scripted into this? The main character is, spoiler alert, the main character is Yuri from this book, from this game which is based on a book and Yuri's put in Doki Doki and that transposition because of the shit they did to Yuri in a game that doesn't exist yet is what makes um, Monica become self-aware in Doki Doki Literature Club. So Yuri's still a character profile from the wrong game. Monica's self-aware and therefore changing the script in the game to make her time come with you. What the fucking hell? How fucking fourth wall meta breaking is that? Like, mental. Mental! Oh my god. Like, that's why I can't play games like that. I'm not smart enough to work my head around them. Uh, but yeah, the Game Furious nailed it with um, those last two videos. Jesus. Oh, we're coming low on time, everybody. I've been reading through your comments in a particular order. Um, there are loads, and again, I haven't had the opportunity to read through all of them. So I'm just really going to shuffle the short but Shuffle the sort by. Um, to grab some of the ones that are also sitting at the top to say, just keep the mix up because sometimes I keep catching the same people's comments and I'm trying to move it around and read as many as possible, of course, if I haven't read yours by now um, and it's something important to say, copy and paste it and maybe I'll catch it next time round, that's totally fine uh, or just catch me live these days. What I'm doing really quickly as well is just readying something really quickly for a read through in just a little bit. So top of the comments, CV, drawing etchy, oh CV. Welcome back. It's always a pleasure to see you sitting at the top. Yeah, Jill is hot, and your sketches and drawings are so cute and sexy. Thank you very much. Looking forward to see your OC. My OCs are usually busty, sexy girls, but to represent myself, I use a more simple and cute chibi character, so I get where you're coming from. Ah, CV, do you see yourself as a cute chibi type of person? CV, drawing etchy, name exactly as it sounds. She also just draws loads of uh, etchy characters on her channel around, and is very supportive over here. Jack H, 69. Pervy face, you know it. Eric San says, oh yeah, and Tommy says your drawings are getting better and better. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, they do. If I keep it up, they do. Um, and if I stop for too long, then they, we fall back a little bit and I need to build it back up again. Heather Andrews says, I actually don't have internet at home. I watch videos at school and sometimes after school when I stay in town. So I have to download things for background noise whilst drawing. So I listen to a crap ton of podcasts, things like myths and legends, lore, what should we draw and our fake history in terms of stuff to uh, work to. Okay, cool. Uh, also some cyberpunk, Korean and Japanese music, including lots of anime intros and outros playing. Yeah, I was surprised by... Because um, somebody in the last uh, DWM was mentioning they were really into the anime intros and outros as well. Or intros mostly, they said. And I was quite surprised that uh, that's something you can listen to on a long term. I thought maybe that would get a bit tiresome. But uh, yeah, does it work? Then maybe we'll give it a go. Anyway. Uh, you like instrum instrumental music or music in the foreign language. I don't pay too much attention to the lyrics, so uh, much still gets done. And you still get the energetic, dark, macabre or futuristic vibes from the music itself. Yeah. Um, 
when you've got stuff playing with uh, an English thing in the background, sometimes your mind locks into the narrative and it can pull you out of what you're doing. If you keep it in a foreign language, maybe that lets you smoothly flow on. But I do like people talking in the background as well, though. It's nice to have human voices. Uh, Spontaneous Dude TV says, Please, dude, seriously, been trying to catch you. Oh, well, excellent, dude. I finally caught you. Do Ruby characters, please. Also, I can't seem to draw lips. Maybe you could do a video on facial features and how to change them around and stuff. Yeah, so many nose and lips requests. Absolutely. <laughs> have you guys watched... Um, I haven't watched this film for fuck like 10 years or something but do you guys remember in the uh, end of dodgeball where he's just like oh my nose and lips you just reminded me of that for some reason yeah no um more hands nose and lips loads of stuff with guys um powers special effects chi and energy loads of requests for very particular types of tutorials and things that list is still absolutely happening um no Hmm, we're not going to have any time for a tutorial before New Year's? I don't know. They're definitely going to be back in 2018. I don't know if we can fit them in this Christmas because I've got to uphold some promises for some other videos and it's going to make things a little bit tight. Always, like I've never said this before, it's always a bit tight for Mikey. Uh, oh my God, don't read into that. <laughs> That's not a metaphor. Um, or maybe it is. Chiron X uh, says, Hi Mikey, first time tuning in. Oh, Chiron. My favourite zombie movies are definitely Shaun of the Dead and Zombieland. Gotta love a bit of comedy alongside everything else. You're absolutely correct. Uh, Chiron, uh, Chironie X. Uh, oh, fucking hell, you've done some absolute paragraphs. Before I read that, Chiron really kindly uh, made me some Mikey-faced gifts uh, for use in Twitch. Uh, emotes, emoticons, is that what they are? Um, which I was just really stoked about. That was really kind of you. I have no idea how to use them in Twitch yet or how to unlock it or what to do, but they're there. Um, and then just in the chat, you made me like a Discord channel. I still haven't had a chance to have a look at that. Um, and I still need to learn about Discord in general. But dude, thank you. Uh, or girl, I have no idea. But thank you very much for all of the support. That's really fucking nice. Anyway, uh, you're also a patron on Patreon. Oh, you're an absolute hero. Uh, currently an office soldier living on a wage. Yeah, we talked about this in the chat. I think we've talked about all of what you're saying live uh, in one of the games since you've written it as a comic here but essentially you say rock on glad you've got something new to listen to thank you very much for the support i'm really glad uh, you like it that is really really awesome of you absolute hero bubblinski Litron. how are we doing for time oh we're just going to fit this in it says train to busan i think that's how it's spelled it's one of the best zombie movies i've ever seen it's a korean movie and i definitely recommend it i've not watched this one this is the first one you've been mentioning but I've not had a watch of Train to Busan disaster film thriller a man Gong Yu is and his estranged daughter and other passengers become trapped on a speeding train during a zombie outbreak oh brilliant this is what I was hoping for I was really hoping you guys are going to come up with films not just the ones that I love so that we can all pat each other's backs and say we're amazing but ones that I've not seen Thank you very much for that suggestion, Bublinski. However, this is the point where we're going to have to wrap up this episode. So again, a great big thank you to you lovely people for following along, getting in the comments, um, and giving me some info, knowledge, and inspiration. Did I ask you a question a bit earlier in the chat? I can't remember what it was. Or maybe it was just feedback on the visuals, how I zoomed into the page, or I don't know how I'm going to do that yet at the time of recording. So you might just see my face in the corner moving rapidly as well um, for what was like a five-hour sit-down session or something mental. Um, but yeah, you guys are absolute champions. It's a pleasure as ever. Let me stop as always just to say the fact that the reason why this channel is actually going, uh, much like Chirani X said, is because of you people on Patreon supporting me there. Um, so an extra great big thank you to the delicious patrons. Uh, Luke C. Epic oh god this is great name loops luke c epic taco time ray c the clamps joe r kyrie art rider 2kx michael s trent h adam d wesby steve r julio felix o jamie taylor s jake y furry friend rory a dave w christian l gabriel r minion 715 icz adam t nikolai hh jeff g and jamal l you guys are absolute champions thank you as ever for the support i always make sure i don't read out your surnames because you know i don't want to give out too much of the information but if you ever want me to let me know and i'll sing it and shout it loud and clear um again no particular themed question today oh my god yeah what are you guys up to for christmas what's going on let me know and i'll hopefully catch you next time around take care